is very powerful. Wink, wink. Wait, why did the podcast suddenly get loud? Hold on, let me check. <gasps> Bruno Lee's brother joined the protest. No, no worry. You're going to be okay. I'm going to call Bojo. Uh, hello, Boris Johnson? Uh, yes. Three dead men are protesting here at Lindbrook. Um, Linus, Godfrey Linus, you may have heard of him. There's also a Johan Bernoulli, and there's finally a Jacob Bernoulli. Um, they're saying that they uh, invented calculus, and they've got a bunch of living people to rally and riot with them. Uh, please help and put them back in the grave. Uh, hopefully the queen will approve. I don't think you need to worry about her. Uh, thank you. Bye. Nudin, don't worry. You're going to be okay as long as my middle name is I. All right, Nudin, you're safe. So, um, I'm just going to put him to the side, and today we'll be looking at finding the equations of tangent and secant lines. Now, you may be wondering, what's a tangent line and a chicken line? I learned in my sixth grade class that tangent meant angles, but no, no. Oh, well, that's data, but tangent did not mean an angle, and the, I, uh, the chicken had not roasted yet. So... What is a tangent and a chicken line? Well, you may actually know that it's a secant line if you're uh, watching and you're a little, little more experienced in calculus, but don't tell the newbies. It's actually a chicken line. So, a tangent and a secant line. So, the tangent line, let's look. Let's say that we have a parabola. So I'm just going to draw this. So two, four, six, eight, all that good stuff. And then I'm gonna have like four, and then 16, and then like 36 and things like that. So the parabola will look a tad bit like hmm, this. Let's say we take a point on that curve. You should know a point, right? Okay, and now we draw a line that intersects only at that one point and ventures in about the same direction as the graph, but never touches the graph more than that one intersecting point. So a tangent only intersects at one point. So intersects what? line. Now a chicken line doesn't go buck 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 as you would expect it to but rather well let's first draw our new and refined parabola since I'm a lazy oh I'm just gonna copy it. Don't tell anybody who's skipping this part. And so our new chicken line will no longer be a red line but it's gonna be green. New refined green color for your new chicken line. Also, it's very tasty. Buy it on Apple now. So, our new secant line will look sort of like this. So, I want it to intersect at two points. So, how am I going to do this? No. There we go. So, that's a secant line. But you may notice that it intersects as one two points. So this is definitely not a tangent line. Now it's a secant line. So we know that a secant line intersects twice. All right. So now you may be saying, but Suborno, you said we were going to find, well, the equations for the tangent and secant line. Well, that's exactly what we are going to do now. All right. So, now, uh, this, while it may be good for visualizing what a tangent and a secant is, is not good enough for my level of accuracy. So instead, I'm going to hop on over to some a place you may have seen multiple times in my lectures. Desmos! All right, so, don't tell anybody I murdered the vibe board. Instead, we have a new and refined complete graph. Whoa. Jesus Christ, the cameraman is getting better and better at piano as we speak. Oh my God, soon he's going to overpass me. But how do we find the equation of our tangent line? 
Well, let's zoom all the way down to a place where they may intersect. Ooh, I think we saw it. Three comma nine. So that means that the only point, the only place that these two graphs intersect that would be three comma nine. So we better, I guess, put a point there or something. So let's move out of the way. All right. And so that point would be, I suppose, um, over here, which would be three, yes, comma nine, yes. All right. So this is three comma nine, but we only know one point on our tangent line. So you may be thinking, how do we find the slope from only one point? Well, the thing is, we don't find the slope from one point. Instead, we find the slope from the derivative. So you may be one. Okay, this is calculus, and it's been 38 freaking lectures. You should know what a derivative is. I'm not going full baby on you here. So, a derivative, well, f prime of x. So now, for those of you who are uh, new to calculus, so yes, I am going to be babying you. Just skip this part, people who've already caught up with the rest of this series. So, f prime of x, we can also derive this. So, hopefully, you've gone into middle school, because otherwise you won't understand this. So, anyways, let's um, take a graph. Graph. And now, uh, magic. No, not magic yet. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to take one point, x, and another point, x plus 8. So, there's a space between there that is 8. And then, you have, well, let's say that our graph is going to be beautiful. And it will look like this. Now, that's not possible for an actual graph. But let's just say it is. And let's walk away with that graph. And with that graph, we know that um, x will be, f of x will be over here. And then x plus h, confusingly, will actually be only a tiny bit more than f of x. Gee, this really is a crazy graph. But anyways, now you can see that, oh yeah, I forgot that it's frozen. But now you can see that we have two fully defined points. Number one and uh, number two, I guess. And so this is x comma f of x, and point number two is x plus eight comma f of x plus eight. Thank goodness I still had space for that. So hmm. now we use the slope equation. Well, we use the slope equation, and that gives us y two minus y one x two minus x one. So this is x1, x2, y1, y2. Sorry, I forget these things. So that means that we get um, y2 is going to be f of x plus 8. And no line. When I was practicing this, I actually forgot uh, how to limit equations. So I derived it all from the beginning. x2 minus x1, which will be x plus 8 minus x, which will just give us 8. So now that means that if we take the derivative, we get f prime of x, uh, we will take the derivative of this. So f prime of x, at the limit of x goes to zero, gives us f of x plus eight minus f of x, these over eight. It's kind of getting clumped in a corner. But now, I'm not going to baby you anymore, but rather, I'm going to give you the power rule rammed in your face. So I'm going to ram the power rule in your face. Gotta be ready. Ready? Go! Equals nx and minus 1. But now, what we're going to do is we're going to plug in. And it's just 2. So that means that f prime of x will be equal to 2x to 2 minus 1. Which means that the derivative of x squared is 2x. Alright. So that's one of the most common problems when you're taking a derivative. Well, we did. So x squared's derivative is 2x. 
So now, how does this help us? Well, remember, derivative is just the uh, the value of slope at any certain point. So, well, since our uh, slope at any point is going to be 2x, then the slope at the x value of 3 should be 2 times the x value or 3 or 6. So now we found the slope, but that's not enough to find the equation. So, hmm. Well, we still do have one point. So, um, what equation do we have? Ah, yes, you! You little pest! Now, I honestly don't use this very much, mostly because I work in higher fields of math, but I guess I have to use it now. So, we know the slope is 6, x minus x1. Hmm, 3 and then plus y1, 9. So that gives us y equals 6x minus 3, uh, it's 6 times x minus 3 plus 9. I can't calculating, calculate, oh yeah, that would be 6x minus 9. Because, well, you're multiplying x minus 3 with 6, giving you 6x minus 18 plus 9 is 6x minus 9. And so that means that we found this equation. And now, let's check decimals to see if we were right about 6x minus 9. Let's see the secret thing. So now, let's see the secret thing. 3, 2, 1. The red graph, the tangent line, was 6x minus 9 after all. Little pest. So now, let's delete it because a bigger surprise will be coming along. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to activate a secant line. Can you cut here because I don't want them seeing the equation. Cut, 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 cut. Okay, so now here is our secant line. So now you see that our tangent line is gone. Don't tell them I murdered it. And instead our secant line also intersects at 3 comma 9. But the thing is, the really cool thing is, it also intersects at 0, 0, or the origin. So 0, 0, or the origin, and 3, 9. Now this would be super easy, because we can just find the slope regularly. But, well, I guess I'll still do it for you. So, I guess that we should add commentary? So, um, you do, okay, I don't think a statue can do it for us. So, um, so that means m is 3, and now I guess we just plug into the equation. So, that means 3 times x minus 0 plus uh, 0. So, that means y just 3x. All right, let's see if we, we were correct with the hypothesis 3x. Aha, it was 3x after all. And this was x squared, I thought you knew that. So this was 3x, this was x squared. And of course, our rotandent line was 6x minus nine. So now the entire gang is here, right? So that, was candid to secret lines that was finding the equation. Subscribe to Bari Science Lab to fall in love with math and science, especially programming.